Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. I'm doing another Star Frontiers video, and this time we're going to be floating in a spaceship through space over a planet. The reason why is I want to talk about something that I learned from Star Frontiers, and it's very scientific. So I'm going to get a little sciency here. I hope that's okay. Bear with me. I'll try to make this not too painful to have to sit through. Um, when it came time to start thinking about the starships in Star Frontiers, traveling through space, getting from planet to planet, star system to star system, I was very much in kind of that Star Trek mindset or even Star Wars. You know, the ships, If you, especially if you look at the main ships, definitely the Starship Enterprise and for Star Wars, both the Millennium Falcon and even the Star Destroyer, all of these ships have a very obvious, planar angle that they work on. What I mean by that is, if you look at them, especially if you look at, like, there's a lot of fan-created and uh, pseudo-official uh, technical specification manuals, you can see that all of these ships are designed with kind of, here is the ship, here's kind of the saucer or the, the main area of the ship, it's going in that direction, and anybody who's on board that ship is going to be walking around like this. So in other words, the, the direction of gravity, the artificial gravity in the game or in the movie or in the TV show, is um, perpendicular to the direction of travel. You're walking much like a boat. I mean, that was basically what a lot of these were, were calling upon. Um, it's well known that Star Trek, the original series, the very in, uh, incan... Uh, the inception of the idea of the show was, you know, Horatio Hornblower and his tall ships sailing the seas and visiting islands and that kind of thing. So for the Starship Enterprise, it was a flying saucer with a couple of pontoons on it. And the idea is, yes, your crew are walking around with gravity down there and they're moving that direction. Totally makes sense. Okay, I'm with you. And Empire, uh, uh, the Millennium Falcon very similar, I mean, I don't know if it was based on a particular boat or anything, but it was that idea of like, here is this sort of flying saucer with a couple of mandibles flying through space and our crew, our adventurers, are walking around, but down is that direction. Kudos to uh, George Lucas for in the, the bit where they're escaping from the Death Star, when Luke and uh, Han get on board the, the turrets and they're fighting the TIE Fighters. As we're going through space this direction, Han goes up that way, Luke goes down that way, and suddenly the gravity is like that direction. So that was a, a cool twist. But but generally speaking, you look at the, at the ships and the Star Destroyer as well. Clearly, it's multiple decks on a ship going that way, and that's the way all the characters walk. They stand around like this. So with Star Frontiers, I assumed, looking at, say, the Assault Scout, that... That's what we had again. We had this kind of Millennium Falcon layout of, you know, the ship is like a big airplane flying in that direction and our crew walk around in it like that. Not true. And at, when I wrapped my head around the way the Star Frontier's design was made, I was like, that's bonkers, but I like it. It makes sense because of science. So I happen to have the Assault Scout uh, map here, and uh, due to things, it's probably not going to show up well. Um, I will instead show the actual image here. What you have are cross-sections of the Assault Scout. Instead of the ship being sort of airplane style, you know, going in that direction with the wings here, imagine it tilted on its rear, so it's pointing up on the wings this way. And what you're looking at are decks that are cut as cross sections. These are the, the different decks. You've got the sky bridge at the top. Then you've got the lower bridge, which is down the nose of the assault scout. Then you've got the crew decks, the crew quarters, engineering, etc. And I was just like, what? That, that doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't get why you would do that. In reading through the Nighthawks rules, I discovered that the way the ships travel is actually directly impacting how the characters get gravity. And this is a, an idea that's been around in a lot of science fiction books, but I had never really seen it ported over to a popular uh, medium, like certainly not a TV show, not until recent years. You have had a few movies and TV shows that have kind of grasped this notion of 
there is no artificial gravity. It's not just a light switch you can flick like Star Trek and Star Wars have always done. We need to make this grounded in a bit more science. Starfingers did it way before any of those guys. Um, now, with one exception, uh, early on, my good old friend Volturnus and the modules, and I have done a few videos talking about that whole mistake, <clears throat> uh, in the very first part of the first bit of the adventure, when you're on board the Eleanor Merez, the Starliner, going to Volturnus, pirates attack. I've talked about all that stuff. In the, in the module, though, they give you a floor plan of the of the Eleanor Merez because you're supposed to get past the pirates uh, down the hallways into the uh, escape, sh escape shuttles or escape pods and unfortunately this layout is like one big long deck and it actually acts along the premise of this is the ship and it's going in that direction and we're walking around like this but this is the only ship that ever actually followed that idea all of the other ones had that vertical stack concept. I think probably when they came up with the uh, first adventure and they were doing the Eleanor Merez, I actually saw somebody talk about this on Twitter recently. Why would they do that? Why would they have the Eleanor Merez deck not make sense compared to the other ships? It was the first module they were kind of spitballing and you know they just assumed well uh, by the time we detail the, the ships and the spaceship combat and all, all that kind of stuff we're going to have artificial gravity sorted out so not to worry about it right now. So unfortunately, that ship kind of breaks the rule, but there are other uh, deck plans that are even more specific and, and, and more detailed. For example, I happen to have some of the Star Frontiers figures, I've done a video about that already, among which are spaceships that you can, a little box set of like Sathar warships and uh, UPF cruisers and uh, destroyers. There's also a freighter. Now I'm going to try and do my best to hold it up to the camera. I don't know if you can make that out very well. It's, it's a very neat little ship. Um, and with this thing, with this uh, ship design, you would think, okay, again, we're flying in that direction and our crew is standing that way. No, they're not. It's actually flying that direction and our crew is standing that way. And I happen to have, and again, this won't come out very well, but um, in uh, the Nighthawks rule set, you've got this map, and inside are deck plans, which I will show with more detail here. You actually see that what we have is, there's the freighter, and it's actually got the five decks detailed as, like, cross sections, almost looking like, um, like the way you would slice an onion. And we're going from the very tip top or front of the ship downward, kind of like you're going from here and you're slicing cross sections. Why? Because that's the way the crew maintains their gravity. A better way to demonstrate all this, instead of all these pictures, because it's a little hard to grasp, let's go with a spaceship. Now, of course, I'm borrowing this from Star Wars, but there's a reason for it, which I will get to in a second. Uh, pretend this is not a Y-Wing. Uh, I've done a video about this, actually. But no, pretend this is not a Y-Wing, pretend this is a Star Frontier spaceship. And for scale, I've actually got out a little Yazarian. Again, I don't know if you'll make him out very clearly in the uh, footage there. Uh, but, you know, let's say this Yazarian is to scale with this Star Frontier's spaceship. It's not quite the size of an Assault Scout. I think that would be maybe twice as large as this. But it gives you a rough idea. We have a big spaceship here, and here's our little guy. As most of the stuff I've already talked about, most of the shows, you would think, okay, he goes aboard his spaceship and he's walking around in the, inside the ship like that type of an idea. But no, he's actually going aboard the ship like this and he's walking around and he's climbing elevators or ladders and going around inside the spaceship like that. So why would you have this kind of a design? This looks bonkers and silly, doesn't it? Well, think about it, and this is where the science part comes in. If you were on board, let's actually uh, pull up the landing gear. Let's say you're on board the Y-Wing, but we'll call it uh, an assault, uh, not an assault scout, we'll call it a, what would we call it? We'll call it uh, an, an invader. Uh, so let's say you're aboard this invader and you're flying through space. Now, if you are actually seated like a regular Y-Wing, if you're, if you're sitting in this direction, here's your little Yuzarian, and he's got this kind of planar uh, angle, as you 
hit the accelerator, you're like being in a car, you're getting pushed back in your chair. And that's a lot of G-forces, especially with the, the speed that these things are going in. Uh, I talked about with the, actually doing the spaceship combat rules, with one acceleration factor of, of a typical spaceship in Star Frontiers, you're pulling five Gs? No, three Gs. So that's a really strong amount of thrust that you're getting. And the designers of the rule book thought, well, why don't we embrace what a lot of science fiction shows have? And that is, instead of the ship being sort of flying along like that, you hit the accelerator and then I guess you drift or you coast through space or you've always got the engines lit. So why not actually just keep with the acceleration, constantly going faster and faster and faster? Keep that, thri that three Gs of force going. And instead, if you invert it so that it's actually this, because there's no up or down in space, if you're actually going in this direction that fast, you're actually getting three Gs pushing you down. So let's have the decks of the ship this direction. Now you've got, as the ship is going up, you've got three Gs, or if you've got a grav dig absorber, which I described when I talked about this stuff, you can actually have a very uh, comfortable one G of force. And now you're walking around inside your ship and it's flying through space and you would go down the ladder go to the next deck, you know, maybe you're down here in engineering and talking with your crew or whatever, as your ship is continuing, continuing to accelerate. So, okay, that's a little bit strange. That means that this thing is constantly going at, a, at a, an, on an increasing rate of speed, faster and faster and faster. How do you then slow down? Like, what, what happens when you get to your destination? Well, this is detailed in the Nighthawks rule, Night rules. When you... Enter the void. I don't think I've talked about that, have I? Oh, I did. I discussed it in the Zebulon's Guide to Frontier Space. That's like hyperspace. You reach a certain speed and boom, you disappear from our known space. You go through the void and you reappear. I think if you cut the acceleration, you jump back down into our space in another star system entirely. So now you've reached your place you want to get to and you're quite a distance away from your final ending spot. What do you do? Now you turn your ship around, and this will be, you'll be in zero G while this is occurring, but then you hit acceleration as you're, remember, you're still going in this direction, right? So now you're burning as you're going up in this direction, and you are slowing down. You're hitting the brakes, basically. You've been flying, go back the other way, before you jump to the, to the void, you were burning really, really fast and taking off like a, like a space shuttle, like going up really, really fast. Now you've reached your destination, still going in that direction. You spin around. Remember, you're still going in that direction really, really fast. You gun it on the, on the engines. They start burning, and now you're slowing down. You are hitting the brakes, but you're flying in that direction really, really fast. So what does that mean? Again, you've got your little guy walking around in the decks, and he's got gravity because he's got force pushing him in that direction. Does that make sense? It's, it's a little bit weird, and it took a long time for me to understand it. But yeah, I mentioned, eventually I grasped the concept of, again, think of it, let's use our, as an actual Y-wing now. When he guns the engine, he's pushing this way and he's lurching back in his seat. If he hits the brakes, I don't know, I guess they had thrusters, anti-thrusters, whatever. If they need to slow down and attack the Death Star, he hits the brakes and he would be pulled forward in his seat, right? So you got that concept? Just take that and now apply it to flying through space. You're constantly hitting the accelerator. Your engines are constantly burning that way. You're going faster and faster and faster and faster this way now. So why not have your deck with your little characters walking around perpendicular to your direction? Perpendicular? I think so. Yeah, so you've got, you're going in that direction, but your decks are in that direction. So you can walk around, you can climb up a ladder, you can check out what's happening, you talk with the navigator, and then, oh, we're almost there. Let's all strap ourselves in. We've entered the void. We disappear from known space. Now we cut the engines. We're back into another part of the frontier. We stop accelerating. We slowly rotate the ship around, and then we hit the Remember, we're still going in this direction really, really fast. But now, as we hit the brakes, we can take off our seatbelt and we can start walking around on the ship. Why? Because we've got gravity. We've got centrifugal force pushing us down as we walk around and do that stuff. So 
I, I don't know if that really clearly explains it, but I was fascinated when I saw these weird cutouts, these these deck plans for these ships and star frontiers. I was like, why is it like a like a, a vertical slice in the ship? Like, why aren't they like the Millennium Falcon or the Starship Enterprise? Like, what's going on? And then I realized, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're using that. Um, I will credit it to Bussard, uh, who I know has been quoted. There was a series of books I read, the Ringworld series by Larry Niven, and they talked about the Bussard Ramjet, and that was essentially using this exact idea. You accelerate for several days, then you turn around and you decelerate for several days, and that maintains a level of gravity inside the ship. Fantastic! I was just like, whoa! They really put a lot of thought into Star Frontiers. Like, there's a level of science involved here that is really cool. I was just fascinated with that when I heard it. I thought, okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. And it actually made me really appreciate how Star Frontiers put a heck of a lot of science into their game. Um, or TSR put a lot of science into the Star Frontiers title. I did sort of talk about that briefly when I was discussing all the different aliens, both mine and the ones that came stock in both Alpha Dawn and also in Zebulon's Guide to Frontier Space. The, the fact that we don't just have a bunch of guys in monkey suits. Sure, there's the Azarians, but other than them, most of the aliens look vastly different. There's some thought put behind the biology of these creatures. Similarly, with the spaceship travel, there's some thought put toward the how the, ve how the vessels actually go through space and the zero gravity effect. There's a whole section in the rule book about what happens in zero gravity. What's it like to do combat? Can you, can you walk on the walls? All this kind of stuff. That was actually specified in the book. I, I'm sure other books or other games have done it. I never, I dabbled once with Traveler and I think maybe they addressed this, but I, I really like the fact that Star Frontiers took a much more nuts and bolts, uh, sort of grounded in real provable science approach to a lot of these things. Very impressive because you'd never really think of doing that I don't think today. Anybody who plays modern day uh, role playing games, any of the space ones, is it all artificial gravity, just flick a switch and we're all walking around like, like a normal kind of what we, what we all assume from watching various pop culture references in science fiction? Is that how it's done? I don't care because I really like the way they did it. I like how the Star Frontiers handled it. It was a little while for me to wrap my head around it, but I'm very, very pleased because it really makes a lot of sense. Anyway. We'll be doing more Star Frontiers videos, but I wanted to throw that one out there. Until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.